breathtaking. Like seeing Niagara Falls for the first time. And if you haven't seen Niagara Falls already, just trust me on this one. This happened on Friday, July 28th with the test commencing at 2.10 p.m. SpaceX conducted the first full up test of the new Deluge system at its Starbase site in South Texas, spraying immense fountains of water up toward and around the facility's orbital launch mount. This test was considerably more powerful than the first one, which the company conducted on the 17th. Water shot upwards from beneath the orbital launch mount for roughly 40 seconds, and it was accompanied by a voluminous blast of sound. No booster was present for this test. New water deluge system to protect against the immense heat and force of the Starship launch, Musk shared in a video he posted. And honestly, the Starship flame deflector is much more intricate than we thought. They have a higher water flow density directly below engines, each outer ring engine having its own spot. Also, there is more flow for the legs. The system appeared to do what it was supposed to do, spray copious amounts of water in an upward direction. When implemented in actual launch scenarios, the Deluge system will function in tandem with engine ignition, absorbing the power generated by Starship's 33 Raptor engines. The next plausible step will be for SpaceX to test the Deluge system during a static fire test of the Starship Super Heavy booster. Shortly after the test, SpaceX continued to build upon the booster bidet system to improve performance. However, the Musk-led company has yet to disclose the exact volume of water it propelled through the system, though SpaceX claims it would like to discharge as much as 350,000 gallons of water during launches of Starship. There should be a spot spin prime test upcoming and then static fire test with booster 9 and the water on. Here's hoping it'll hold up to the static fire test. In fact, that'd be another milestone for the entire launch site system. A functioning water deluge system will work in SpaceX's favor to protect the pad during launches of Starship and to convince the Federal Aviation Administration that the company is worthy of another Starship launch license. To that end, SpaceX has also constructed a metal diverter beneath the OLM. This infrastructure, both the water deluge system and the giant metal plate, was absent during the inaugural launch of Starship on April 20th, resulting in substantial damage to the OLM and the expulsion of dust and debris into the surrounding areas. In the aftermath of that launch, the FAA is now facing a lawsuit for authorizing it, while Starship remains grounded pending an investigation. During its maiden flight, Starship lasted for approximately four minutes before entering into a fatal tumble that forced controllers to issue a self-destruct command. SpaceX is now working towards the second launch, saying it's in the process of implementing thousands of tweaks to the 394-foot Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built. In other news, we have another test happening. This time, it's S-28 undergoing cryo-loading at Massey's. Ship 28 was stacked in March and April of 2023. After SpaceX destroyed Ship 26, this should be the third prototype to launch for an orbital flight. It was also the first ship to be stacked with a new method. Instead of first stacking two halves of the ship, which are then stacked together, they now stack it top to bottom. This way, the crane can rest attached to the nose cone during the whole process process. Furthermore, welding robots will only need to work on the ground and not high up in the air. There are some temporary and intermittent state Highway 4 road delays on the 30th of July, 9 p.m. to 12 a.m., and more on the 31st and the 1st of August from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. No doubt that S-28 will be back to the production site in no time. After all, Starbase is moving rapidly. SpaceX is an absolutely fierce company when it comes to iterating their designs on both ship and ground systems. However, SpaceX hasn't obtained environmental permits for the flame deflector system it's testing in Texas. In an email to CNBC, a spokesperson for the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, or TSEC, the state's environmental regulator, confirmed that as of July 28th, SpaceX had not applied for what is called a Texas Pollutant Discharge Elimination System. 
system permit at its Starbase facility. The regulator said that the SpaceX site has previously attained three stormwater permit authorizations. The determination of whether a discharge permit is needed is the responsibility of the business owner based on how they plan to manage wastewater, the TSEC wrote in an email to CNBC. The state agency has been in discussions with SpaceX about industrial permitting, the regulator added. The representative for TSEC told CNBC that the regulator recommends applications be submitted at least 330 days before the proposed construction of wastewater treatment facility. Stormwater permits take far less time to process. Hopefully, SpaceX will have a solution for all of this soon. And what better way to keep track with all the latest news than to subscribe and ring that notification bell? You know you want to. Meanwhile, the Falcon team just broke their launch pad turnaround record with a midnight Starlink launch. SpaceX successfully launched its Falcon 9 rocket carrying 22 more Starlink version 2 mini satellites into low Earth orbit. This mission marked the 15th launch and landing for the booster and the tail number B-1062. More notably, SpaceX's 50th orbital launch of 2023 also marked a historic turnaround time for the launch pad at Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. Prior to Friday's launch, the previous pad turnaround record was 113 hours, 14 minutes, which was set in June between the Satria and Starlink 5-12 missions. The new record now stands at 99 hours and 11 minutes. The last mission to launch from SLC-40 was the Starlink 6-6 mission, which launched on July 23rd at 10.50 p.m. EDT. In another part of the space industry, ULA has recently raised concerns about a third competitor in national security space launch. United Launch Alliance CEO Tori Bruno said he has a bunch of questions about the latest changes announced by the Space Force for the procurement of national security space launch services. Speaking on the CNBC Manifest Space with Morgan Brennan podcast that aired July 27th, Bruno was asked to comment on the Space Force's decision to add a third heavy lift launch provider in the next round of contracts, also known as National Security Space Launch Phase 3. Currently, ULA and SpaceX are the only NSSL launch providers. Due to concerns about growing commercial demand, the Space Force, in a revised solicitation on July 14th, said it planned to select a third provider in the NSSL Phase 3, creating an opportunity for a new entrant, like Blue Origin, which is developing its own heavy rocket. Bruno has warned that large rockets will be in short supply over the next several years due to commercial demand. In that vein, Brennan asked Bruno whether he thought that the updated NSSL strategy was a smart move or whether it would create too much potential future competition in the market. This latest RFP draft update from just last week is very, very different, he said. It does have a provision to bring another provider into lane 2 for a very limited number of missions. Space Force officials have talked about capacity being a motivation for that, Bruno added. We have a bunch of questions to make sure we really understand what they're doing and trying to achieve. After those questions get answered, Bruno told Brennan, I'll be able to tell you how we feel about all of that. Although the Space Force is seeking three domestic providers of heavy lift launch, there's really only two now. Now, Bruno said. Three awards is really addressing three bidders. In terms of a competitive landscape, it's not competition if everybody wins, he added. So that's the part we're asking them about to make sure we understand. A ULA spokesperson said in a statement that Bruno is reviewing the second draft of the Phase 3 solicitation. Well folks, that wraps up our show for today. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.